Well, folks, welcome back to the Network Free Wall. Oh. After this case has been hey. discussed, the worst, we're going to talk about the good games. The games that were revolutionary, the games that are memorable, the ones that are classic, that pretty much all three of us grew up in our childhood. The games that represents the war nostalgia from the 90s. <gasps> pretty much the games that kicked ass that everybody talked about. And as for this case, if there are any audible mentions, I mean, there yes. is all Oh mentions. boy, I don't oh even know God. where to begin. I don't even know where to begin. Nintendo 64 had a lot of great games. Oh, tons. I would put Tons it. of great games. I would put all some are people's, some are, some are still playing today. I, Believe it or not. I would put all audibles on here, but the reason why I didn't do it because, well, arguments and... What? Because I don't... I'm afraying about, you know, all you saying that, oh, that should have been on the list, and that one shouldn't have been. This was a Well, oh, tell them to tickle your butthole with their tongue, oh. nice and deep. Make it moist yeah. and bleach. So anyways, for me, I'm just going to be fair and say I'm not putting no honorable mentions on here, just for the sake of, uh, of a lot. Tell them to give you a rusty trombone, they'll understand. So overall, I, I have no honorable, so go ahead, gentlemen. <laughs> me and you are probably going to Huh? I actually have ten, believe it or not. Because <laughs> this is my favorite console of all time. It's one of the most. It's probably the most. Without uh, the Dreamcast, one of the most underrated. Actually. Um, first up, we got Majora's Mask. Romy has never played this, believe it or not. Never, never, this one. Uh, this is the sequel to Ocarina of Time, where he wears the mask, and you have to deal with time and the moon as like this weird looking face. Oh, that creepy ass fucking face! Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, that's one of my honorable mentions. Austin, this is the next one. Austin, I'm sorry, I had to put it on my honorable mentions. Conquer's Bad Fur Day. <laughs> that is a game, that's a love it or hate it game. But with the, that's also made by awesome. Rare. The yeah. humor behind it is fucking ridiculous, but it's awesome. Yeah, it's one of the greatest games of all time. <laughs> and some, one of the best bosses of all time, the Great Mighty Pooh. The yeah, I'll, I'll to, yeah. The Great Mighty Pooh. Next up, we have a couple racing games. Okay. Um, I think we all know what's coming up for uh, Mario Kart 64. I have that on Marvel Mentions as well. Why is it in my top five? MTPO. I have Mike Tyson's better. Uh, uh. Yeah, for all you fucking pussies out there that fought for Mario Kart 64, uh, I can't beat Mike Tyson. It's too fucking hard. Mr. Sandman, you keep knocking me out. Well, get good. Tutorials. Well, I never did do tutorials, but I did do many places. What's the tutorials? Well, Water from um, Six, solid one. Yeah, Mario Kart 64, fun fucking game, man. Another one is F Zero X. That's oh, also on mine. The game. sequel love, to F Zero. Love that sequel. The sequel to F Zero. Fuck it. Because it had a lot more characters you could play as. Way more. Um, way more characters you get to basically choose your. Um, Choose your car, choose your choose your guy, and race the hell out of him. Oh, yeah, F-Zero. They call it F-Zero for a reason, because you're fucking flying. Flying through the air. Yeah. Um, next one is Beetle Adventure Racing. Um, this is the one where you race with these uh, Volkswagen Beetles. I've never heard of this. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. It's so much fun. Okay. So much fun. Beetle Adventure Racing. I absolutely love that game. Star Wars Rogue Squadron. The, yes, that's also one of my honorable mentions. That was a kick-ass game. There was a couple of good, other good Star Wars games. Uh, remember Shadows of the Empire? Yeah. Yes. It that was, was like on a, the 64 too. It was like between the second and third game, you play a character named Dash Rendar. Really cool. I had so yeah. much fun. A very innovative concept, too. Mm-hmm. Because it wasn't... With um, Princess Leia or no, it was a Luke different Skywalker, character. it was a totally different character. Based on a based on a book series, no. Dash Dash Rendar, that was his name. Awesome. Pretty cool shit. Let's see. Uh, also, we have uh, 1080 snowboarding. I saw that on a lot of people's lists. Uh, me with sports games, you know how I am. <laughs> yeah, you and your simulated bullshit. <laughs> I fucking hate them, dude. Except for SimCity 2000. <laughs> Let's see. Um... I had to pick a wrestling game on the honorable mentions, uh, so I went with no mercy. WrestleMania no. 2000. Oh, I thought it was No Mercy. I I thought you yeah. seriously. That okay? 
No. Oh, wow. That, Dude, that's shocking. Dude, you love No Mercy, though. Actually, you know what? Screw it. No Mercy. I was going to say, because no, no Mercy, if I was in your shoes, I would pick that any day of the week. Dude, No Mercy was awesome. No it's, Mercy. It's, it's, it had... it's arguably known as, like, the best wrestling game ever made, along well, with Well, actually, competition on uh, You Comes the Pain. Two more. Right. Donkey Kong 64. Another awesome game by Rare. Rare is the fucking shit, yes. dude. Yes, and awesome. last but certainly not least, easily the best baseball game of all time, Ken okay. Griffey Jr. Slugfest. <laughs> okay. Alright, now it's time for my honorable mentions. You, there are uh, some that I'm surprised no one mentioned. Um... First of all, I think I talked about this earlier, and I can't. I have the first one on my PC. They remastered it. It is awesome. I can't wait for it to do the sequel too. Turok Dinosaur Hunter and Turok Two Seeds of Seeds Evil. Seeds of Evil. Turok Two has the one of the absolute greatest fucking weapons of all time, the Cerebral Boar. This thing is. I did I, on the Pain Again episode. I forgot what episode it is. I did the top 10 greatest first person shooter weapons of all time. It was my number three. The Cerebral Broar, what this does is it's a weird looking gun and there's a, a crosshair that locks onto the enemy's skull. And when it locks on, you fire that weapon, it shoots this huge homing drill and the enemies are just panicking like they're just running like, oh fuck, I'm screwed. And when the thing, it, lo it launches into their fucking head, starts drilling into their skull, fucking blood and chunks flying over the fucking place, and when it's drilled all the way in, BOOM! Their fucking heads explode! <laughs> and and Turok 2 is only the best looking game, especially if you use... There was a rumble pack and the expansion pack. The expansion pack allows the game to run on more memory. Because if you play without it, there are some slow frame rate issues and shit, because... It went way be the Turok 2 went way beyond the system's um, uh, compatibility of how, how much memory and how much uh, data you can put into a game. That's where the expansion pack came in. Okay, um, another one. <laughs> no kidding, that's what I was thinking. Alright, next one, I have, hey Gary, huh? Banjo-Kazooie! Banjo Banjo Kazooie! Yes, sir. And another one? Diddy Kong Racing. Mm. We're gonna talk about that in a Bunch of rare. A lot. Dude, Bunch rare is the king shit. And in my top five best, two of them are rare games. Shall... I think we all know which one are. Yeah. Shall we have begun? <laughs> oh, my number five. This game, I'll tell you right now, this is game, obviously, this is game that was a part of my childhood for a long time. I played this at almost every fucking day when I was a kid. Because this game was so much fun with the selection of characters, a variety of, tr of the tracks, and pretty much itself, the game was challenging at its best, and it was a lot of fun. I'm talking about Diddy Kong Racing. Good thing. This game yes. was absolutely brilliant. One of the best race games of all time. And plus, also the intro for the game. I fucking love that music every time. Love the music, love watching the intro all the time. It's just fucking brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. So much nostalgia, so much love, and so amazing and wonderful. Amazing. Um, and what? Fantastic. And what? It's, 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 it's fun. It's fun. I remember. Roll, roll, Diddy Kong Racing. I wish I had the game so I could play it for the network, but sadly. It's great, terrific, fantastic. I remember. Asshole, I know sold my copy, so you know what? Fuck oh, him. that's right. Fuck that him, man. 
Yeah, he shoved that cartridge up his ass. Overall, oh, three car race, my number five, and love to have that back because it was my childhood. So, anyways, go ahead with your number five, Alex. Okay, my number five. Um, is something Romy mentioned in his thousands of thousands of honorable mentions. Um, it's a rare game. It is uh, Banjo Kazooie. Banjo Kazooie. Oh, Banjo Tooie. That was the sequel, but Banjo Kazooie. Uh, yeah, that fucking witch. Far character. superior. <laughs> Far more superior. Yeah. Um, a lot of people are writing. I think it's a clone of Super Mario 64, but I don't think it's that. that tr that's true at all. Um, because this is far in the way a great game. Oh, hell yeah. yeah. It was um, unique. You got a fucking bear and you got a big bird who lives in his backpack. <laughs> yeah, the story, and the storyline is pretty typical. Banji's sister, or Banjo's sister, gets kidnapped by evil witch, and Eve. they have... Yeah. <laughs> And Kazooie, who's this grumpy little bird that lives in his backpack. <laughs> Dude, Rare, Rare knows how to do such clever fucking, like, clever humor. They always have. And it's kind of like a clone, because Mario had the stars, and, uh, and um, Banjo Kazooie, they had the puzzle pieces. Puzzle pieces, yep. Yeah. Um, you know, the gameplay is great. Absolutely awesome. amazing soundtrack. Good platformer, too. Great platformer. Um, so, it's absolutely a f one of the best games in Nintendo 64's history, and Nintendo history, mind you. Mm -hmm. And I just really wish that they would release it on the virtual console soon. Did, didn't they do, like, a remastered version of it? On the Xbox. Because Rare is part of the... Um, That's Microsoft. right, Rare... Oh, well, it makes no sense because you're able to buy Donkey Kong Country on the Nintendo Wii Virtual uh, Console, and that was made by Rare. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. Alright. So yeah, Banjo Kazooie, absolutely phenomenal game. That's my number five. My number five! Alexander the Great is about to twist his nipples harder than you could ever imagine. You could say this is like a remake or sequel to the Ish. Super Nintendo version. And even though the game might be short, it has long replayability with so many paths you can take. So many outcomes and two different endings and trying to earn all the medals. Yeah. And this is a game that Zalor won. If you don't know who Zalor won is, he is like the king of Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. He's also the king of Star Fox. Uh, that's my number four, so... That's I'm my number four, four also. I'm oh, wow, well, so... Star Fox 64. This game... Yes, sir. This game was fucking clever and unique in its own way. So fucking clever. Genius. I will, I will say this, though. There was one... Okay, if I had two nitpicks, is this. One, there is one level, I swear, it came right out of Independence Day. Yep, that's the one where... Where they have, yeah, it is. And the, other one, thing with the... And, and the other one, it's not one of my favorites. Oh, uh, favorite levels, it, it's the submarine level. Yeah, but it's a fun level. We gotta get that's better. hard as shit. I played it the other day. And uh, according to Some Call Me Johnny, really good uh, video game uh, channel on YouTube, there is like this awesome remaster version of it. I think it was only made for the... What was it made for only? The 3DS? I think so. I forgot what it was called. Star uh, Fox 64 3D, I think. Dude, that was awesome. And if you buy it on the virtual console, it it's just not the same as... It's the not the same. No, it's not. The, the 3DS version? Why could you make that into the virtual console? That was incredible. Yeah. Because that's what a remastered version should look like. Um, I mean, you, you got so many levels. Of course, you got my favorite levels probably, um, probably the one we had to make that fucking train crash into that factory. No! Hit the brakes! Hit the brakes! Hit the brakes! <laughs> also, the game has really good sense of humor, too. Oh my god, what was it, what was it like, um... Are you gonna listen to that, monkey? Well, remember Bullet Star, because they're on the train? He's like, train! With the brakes! Fucking use the fucking brakes! He's like, I don't speak train. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, uh, 
And there are, like I said, there's two alternate endings. One is if you take the wrong path. The other one is if you take the right path. Yes, the wrong path, you get the robot. Yeah, you get the robot. And the other path, you get this fucking brain. Brain. Shit. Brain and the, eyes. The mother brain. That reminds me of Super Metroid. <laughs> so, yeah, and, you know, you got good amount of power-ups. You can go through rings. You get the double lasers. You got the, the lock-on features, the power lasers, the power bombs that come out, and... Many other goodies and how many, uh, how many uh, shit you destroy. And plus, you got colorful characters. You know, you got, of course, the least uh, Star Fox. You got uh, Slippy. Uh, yeah, Slippy. That that fucking toady. Motherfucker should stick to eating um, honey smacks. <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> Motherfucker looks like he came off the honey smacks cereal box. And oh, then you got get this guy off me. And then you got uh, uh, Fal. Uh, what's his name? Falcon. Falco. Yeah, Falco, he's like an asshole. <laughs> In a funny way. And then you got a couple others yeah. like Fucking awesome. Oh uh, you got Yeah, tell oh, Peppy, he's the Peppy, he's the uh the Peppy veteran. Jack Rapid. Peppy Le Pew? No, not that fucker. No, he's that's... the veteran because in the backstory, he was he's... part of the original Star Fox team. Mm hmm And the other guy, I believe it was Pigma the Pig, he betrayed them and joined the Star Wolf team. Yep, and that's why I think that's why that end up to the events of uh, the older McCloud to yes. the scene. But, um, Pretty much. Yeah, good shit, man. What my favorite levels is the lava level. Oh, the solar. Yeah, but remember, the N64 version, the ver, the, ver, uh, the, uh, the, the Nintendo Wii Virtual Console version, don't even, it's not even the same thing. Oh, hell no. So yeah, that's my number five, and I guess that's your guys. Uh, go ahead, you can um, speak. Go ahead, Gary. Well, I was gonna get to my number three, but okay. Well, you know, it was back to me. Did, wait, did they get? Did this game had co-op? Yes. It, um, it had a multiplayer mode. That is true, but if you could play co-op through the um. No. The single, oh, that would have been the best thing. Oh, here was also one of the hardest things to do in the game. It was in that level where the sea is like all green toxic and you gotta shoot all the uh the well, the lights. The search right search lights. Holy shit, that was hard. <laughs> that's probably the hardest task in the whole game. That, that's yeah. that, I think it was pretty easy. Well, because you cannot miss one and you can go so far left and right that you might scroll it off the screen. Pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much, pretty much. Um so I guess the replay value will bring oh, yeah. it back again oh, and again so. and again. And again, and again. Oh, so it's fun. one of those games that you will spend multiple, multiple hours trying to complete, and it just keeps coming back again and again yep. and again. You just can't put the controller down. That's yeah. my number four. If we were doing our list of the personal favorites, this would be my number one. Okay. Well, anyways, uh, so it's, you know, it's my turn. No, it's my turn because it comes yeah. around me. You know, was, it's called reach around, Gary. I was, okay, shut up. I know, shut up. I was say. Quiet. Be quiet. Shut the fuck up. Asshole. No. Shut the fuck up. No, my turn. don't you fuck. Don't you He's fucking tell him to shut up, man. What the fuck? All right. right. My number four is an another game made by Rare. What is it? You could say this is somewhat of a spiritual successor sequel to GoldenEye. Uh, oh boy. And of course, you had, of course, if you have the expansion pack, you know, it'll work better. And this has one of the coolest fucking weapons, along with Turok 2. It's this uh, sniper rifle railgun where if you aim to the sides, you can see enemies through walls and you can kill them through walls. It's like a railgun sniper rifle. Put together. See, this is definitely, I'm by the way, I'm going to say this is my number three. So. My number four is Perfect Dark. Oh, then never mind me. Never mind, never mind, never mind. Never mind. Double. Uh, oh, shit, I almost said it. Double O Nine. We're not talking about Double Nine. Hey, what's up, you guys? <laughs> now, Perfect Dark, I'm not talking about the shitty one that came out for the 360. No, I'm talking about the classic Perfect Dark that was, you know. You can see, like I said, it's it was hard to top uh, what they originally did, but they did in this game, and you play a badass film fatal. You don't see that too often in games. It was launched in I'm May. Of, no, oh, no worries. It was launched, it was developed by Rare, and it 
it uh, it is also, you know, it's a first-person shooter genre and involves some stealth aspects. And you could say, it's like I said before, it's like, it's like the best sequel to GoldenEye if it was an official sequel. So, if you ever get a chance, play this shit, man, because this game is awesome. My number four, and yeah, this this is a revolutionary game. Perfect Dark is my number four. You know, since we're on the 009, uh, 007 uh, topic of James Bond, my number three is GoldenEye. Hold your thought, because that's also my number three. <laughs> Let me say this right now about this game. Wait, hold up. I wonder if Alex has it at number three. Let me take a Let's listen. Keep talking about the game. I gotta get some water. I am thirsty as a month. So anyways, let me say... So anyways, let me say this about this game in general about it. If you want to talk about games that know that... Okay, there's a lot of video games out there that can't really, you know... How can you say pull off, you know, from a movie and whatnot to make it perfect? If you get what I'm saying? GoldenEye, this was definitely one of those games that knew how to make, a, that was, that made, thought that was just absolutely perfect, just like the movie. This was one of those games that was done with its story, its characters, its pretty much the whole entire concept of the graphics, the visual presentation, the character presentation, everything about this game was just dead on like it was with the movie. It was absolutely brilliant. Fucking love this game. It's something that you can... This is also another one of those games where you can just sit around and just play it over and over and over. Why? Because it was so fucking not only addictive, but fun. That's like the key word of this game is it's fun. By the way, is your number three golden eye? What? No, it is not. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. That's Gary and I's number three. No, <laughs> I was, was just, joining along with him. I was just, I was just saying about this game that uh, this game was not only addictive, it was fun, and this was one of those games that was just as perfect as the movie. This is one you of those. Okay. This is one of those rare fucking games. This is one of those where the transition from ends. movie to video game was awesome. Perfect. Another one. Another one was the Chronicles of Riddick. Yeah. Uh, the the first person shooter for the 360, I believe. That was awesome. Mm -hmm. And this, okay, what Doom did? What are you laughing at? Nothing. What are you laughing? What are you laughing? Nothing. Uh -huh. No. No. Uh -huh. No. What are you laughing at? <laughs> Son. What are you laughing at? Find out. Yeah, shit. Sure. GoldenEye! What made this game? Not only because of its awesome weapons and its great missions, it's multiplayer. Four oh, player yeah. multiplayer. Do, 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 do not play with the odd job. Do, 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 do. And of course, it has one of the best fucking weapons ever the Golden Gun. Yeah. You have to reload really after every shot, but one hit kills, baby. <laughs> one hit kill. Another awesome game made by Rare. Mm -hmm. Yes. Fantastic. I don't, I'm not going to say no more about it because I already said my piece when these guys had to take their piss and shit break, so I'm all good. <laughs> there you go. All right, Speaking Alex. of piss and shit, open your mouth, Gary. Shut up! All right. Anyways, go ahead, Alex. You're number three. You're number three. My number three is uh, Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> I'm just fucked with you. Uh, Alex! Alex! What? Uh. what the fuck, dude? Come on, you gotta admit, that was pretty good. Yeah, Will of, yeah, Will of Fortune my ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Will of Misfortune. Misfor misfortunity. What is your number three? Number three for me is the very first game that... A lot of a lot of people consider to be the first video game that they have ever played. Uh, not me, but because <laughs> I'm old. I mean, on the Nintendo 64. Actually, that is, that is I'm gonna join along with you. Super Mario 64. That is my number two. <laughs> you are, okay, hold on a second. That's my number two as well. <laughs> oh, Jesus. This right, game. Super Mario 64. This game took Mario to a whole nother level. 
Three dimensional. Three dimensional and uh Castlevania take notes. Yeah. You know the best thing about it? The the thing the camera that's holding you is a fucking Lakitu holding a camera on a on a fishing stick, kinda like from Super Mario World, how it's a one up. <laughs> This game was a whole nother level, taking the whole experience of Mario that you all knew and loved to the three-dimensional world of him having his own personal adventure. It was fucking, fucking beautiful. And not only that, I mean, you have collected 120 stars, right? All of them? Okay. The hardest star in the game for me, there's two of them. Getting a hundred coins in the fucking clock tower. Oh, yeah. And getting a hundred coins in that cloud level where if you fall, you're dead. Mm -hmm. The clock. Those, the clock tower, that was the fucking hardest one, man. That, that was a nightmare. But, it's, it's worth it because once you get 120, you get to fish your old pal Yoshi for a hundred lives. Yeah. That's right. And you got three power-ups. You got the invisibility, which you can go through certain walls. You got the uh, Red Bull. Red Bull gives you weights where you can fly. <laughs> <laughs> where you can fly around and, you know, for... And by the way, folks, you wonder why when I'm playing on a, a, a controller, this is how I got used to playing inverse with first person shooters is because of Super Mario 64 yeah. because controls are set to default when you go down you go up you go up you go down that is where I learned it it's Super Mario 64 yes. and of course the third power up Man of Steel not Superman you literally are Steel <laughs> Man of Steel oh absolutely oh, Metal Mario Metal Mario yeah so uh, my favorite level um the giant, the small giant world, that's one of my favorites. I like that one. I cannot say what my favorite level is because the whole game in general, of how it's based I like... on, it's just fucking yeah. fantastic. The whole thing is just great. I can't really choose. I like the, um, the sand level. Oh, that one's fun. You know, where he's, it's like a little desert where you gotta go in the temple. Mm -hmm. the, lava, the lava, the lava stage is pretty cool, especially in the oh, volcano. Yeah. And you got also you got that that goddamn fucking troll snowman, that massive snowman that just blows you off the bridge. Whoa! Yeah, it's pulling battle toes in a way, but a different, <laughs> but a different scenario. Yeah. So yeah, that's my number two. Super Mario 64. Um, game itself, absolutely. Game's absolute classic, and it's a game that everybody needs to play. Mm -hmm. It's true. It's true. No, I, I have nothing more to say. You. It's 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 a masterpiece. It is. All right. Well, speaking of masterpiece, oh, my number two. Oh, well, speaking of that, you know my favorite sound effect of the game is when you talk to the pink bombs and they and they activate the candy doll. Remember those? You don't remember those? That's all, folks. No, that's not Porky Pig, but they yeah, activate the like cans porky. for you. The funny shit. It sounds like Porky. <laughs> it sounds like Porky Pig. You look like Porky Pig, so... Fuck. <laughs> well, I don't really need to explain number, my number two, because it was your guys' uh... Number three. Number three and... Well, Gary's number three, I believe, because it was Goldeneye. Yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't mention Perfect Dark. I never played it, that's why. Oh, dude, it was incredible. I think Goldeneye's better. But it was if Goldeneye had an awesome spiritual successor, and it was made by the same company. Well, that was better. Because James Bond. James Bond, my ass! <laughs> by the way, that's James... Oh, speaking of uh, James, that's my buddy's favorite uh, James Bond, is Pierce Brosnan. <laughs> he really? He, that, yeah. He loved, Goldeneye's one of his all-time favorite movies. So. Yeah, mine too. It's, it's the 17th... It closely mirrors the plot of the of the movie. Not a lot of not a lot of um, video games do that when it comes to their video game adaptations to movies. Mm -hmm. You know, but this is one of the ones that does it to the T perfectly. Yep. Um, <laughs> oh, odd job. He's a he's a bastard. <laughs> no one ever played with odd job. We made a rule: no one plays with odd job. <laughs> Yeah, he's a cheap ass. Yeah. Slappers only. Uh, uh, gold. You can play the golden eye mode where everyone has a golden gun and try to see if you get. <laughs> the man with the golden gun. The man with the golden gun. Yep. 
Yeah. The, the four-player multiplayer, that was revolutionary. Halo, Call of Duty, and maybe others down the road, you can owe a big thanks to GoldenEye. Because GoldenEye, Half-Life, and Doom were the essentials. Of and the, the, music, the music in this game was absolutely perfect. It's awesome. And it adds a lot of the ambience to the game. Oh, yeah. Yep. You know? Um... Especially when they're in the elevator. They get to hear the elevator music and it's the James Bond theme song. Hey. Oh, but yeah. Best, it's best a, um, it's best cool. You best me you put in coach and you have, like, double rocket launchers and grenade launchers just for shits and giggles. <laughs> and every time you die, do 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 But, yeah, it was absolutely brilliant. That's my number two and your guys' is number three, I believe. Yes, sir. yes, sir. So there we go. Oh, Number one, I think it's pretty obvious. It's it's really obvious, folks. You you, you when I did my top Not ten greatest games of all time, Not this way. one's uh, Super Mario sixty four was on that list. Not this is not my number one. Well, folks, I'd like to humbly apologize about that. My camera went out, and this guy right here had to leave that night because it was getting late. So we had to continue it over to the next hey. day, which is today. So humble apologies about that. But we left off at our number one. <laughs> So as for the number one, since these guys were talking about a great game for me, that is not my number one. Now, you probably are going to be thinking then, what the hell is my number one if this ain't it? Now, here's the thing though, my number one is not The Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time, nor Majora's Mask. Now, I understand the fact that Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time is one hell of a popular game, and it is a masterpiece of a video game. It's a... Like I said, it's a masterpiece, one of the greatest games that's been ever released. Don't get me wrong, I absolutely fucking love the game. It's a phenomenal piece, but why is this not my number one? Because before I played this, there was this game that I played that not only was pretty much people saying like, Oh, it's like a ripoff or some of Super Mario 64. I found this no, game to be I found no. this game to be a lot more than that because I mean out of all the animals in the world that they had, they chose a bear. Not only they chose a good uh, animal wise of a bear playing in this movie, but a very simple a very simple plot of a game or a very simple plot with excellent adventure. Uh, shut the fuck up, phone. Also, outstanding platforming, easy controls, great sense of humor. Uh, excellent music, great, um, visual score. Pretty much everything was absolutely fantastic about this game. And when I first played... That was, and when that I, was phenomenal. And when I first... Yeah, thank you, Lucas. When I first played this game, I was immediately hooked with this game. I grew up with this... I, this was one of the games I grew up with. And absolutely fantastic before I got the Legend of Zelda. I'm talking about Banjo-Tooie. Bang, oh wait, Banjo Tooie or Banjo Kazooie? But I'm not. Is it okay to say both or no? Because honestly, I played with both of them. But before Kazooie, there was Tooie for me. I played Tooie. No, no, no. Banjo Tooie is the Banjo. sequel. Banjo Kazooie, Kazooie is the original. Okay, well, between the two, between Banjo Tooie and Kazooie, because I've actually played both of them. You're probably thinking of Banjo Kazooie. Yeah. Now that, up against the witch. that I'm being truthful on. Banjo Kazooie. Oh, you're being, oh, you're being truthful about that. The game itself is fucking phenomenal. I mean, I don't need to say any more. The game itself is, a, six. is fucking fantastic. Right number five. Fucking fantastic game. Now, all, I know there are going to be some people who are going to be fucking surprised as hell in the comments saying, wow. But guess what? I don't care. Well, I, I mean, I care about what everybody else has. I mean, I'm not the only one who's probably not going to have it as their favorite game of all time. I mean, Austin, for example. He has Quonka's Bad Fur Day. That's his number one. Yeah. <laughs> just, to put, just to put an example. So, yeah. Like I said, folks, absolutely love Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. The game's a masterpiece. But before there was that, like I said, Banjo-Kazooie was was the game I played before this one. Before that one. Yep. Uh, Fantastic game. Good shit. And I wish I had my copy again. But again, before that, 
this ass on you sold my copy for me a long time ago, and I'm still sad about it to this day. What a bird in a backpack of a bear's ass. Yeah, and it was creative. <laughs> the game itself was fucking creative. But go ahead, gentlemen. I'm going to stop. Ba I'm going to stop. Uh, you know, uh, you know what the funny thing is? What's that? The sequel, Banjo-Tooie, uh, Banjo awesome game. Yeah. Guess who was the lead director of that game? Some asshole. M. Night Shyamalan or Ding Dong Dumb Dick? No, no. John Lasseter. Wow. Who did? Guess who he? And he went on to direct Toy Story 1 and 2. Wow. Ooh, ooh, uh, uh, and then he did Cars oh, 2. <laughs> but he was one, he's one of the main guys behind Pixar. Uh, Pixar. Yeah. True story. Yeah, I know true that. story. But overall... I'm unique. In my, I'm unique with my choice, and yes, I'm grabbing on my tits. So again, yep. I absolutely love Legend of Zelda: Twist Ocarina of Time. Yes, twist the nipples. Before, like I said, before I played Ocarina of Time, there was Banjo Kazooie for me. I'm I'm, st I'm yes, stop babbling. Barry is unique and special. Special Ed. Ed. Yeah, so are you, and so are you. Mm, you know, one takes one to know one. Alexander, I believe you and I have the same numero uno. That is absolutely 150,000 percent. <laughs> and that, of course, is without question one of, if not the greatest game, not just on the Nintendo 64, but of all time. Of all freaking time. LC Muscles, take notes. <laughs> Oh, no, 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 carpet, carpet. No, 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 it's carpet. Carpet can kill Zelda, no. <laughs> no, it's carpet, no. Carpet, carpet. No, super, no, Super Metroid's not the greatest game ever. It's not the greatest game ever. Carpet can, 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 carpet can eat those owls and shit them out like cupcakes. <laughs> and the crystal shards. I wonder what, <laughs> man, I wonder what color. Crystal shards up your ass. I wonder what yes, folks. <laughs> Legend of Zelda, the Ocarina of Time. A game... To where no one never thought it could top the original Legend of Zelda or a link to the or past. A link to the past for the Super Nintendo, which is a link to the past us. because that was easy. It, no, it is easily the best Super Nintendo game. I think. Oh well, I know what you're gonna say Super Metroid. Yes, Super Metroid was my number one. Number two. Number one. Number two. Legend of Zelda is my number three on the Super Nintendo. Number two is Super Mario World and so on. But, okay. Uh, yes. You know, one of the main directions, of course, uh, Shigeru Maimoto, one of the, arguably the god upon video games. Is there a way we can clone him? No. Oh, yeah. Clone him and Kate Upton. You know, I gotta say right now, if we actually did like a top 10 uh, video game list, uh, top 10 masterpiece video games, all that kind of time would be on my list. Uh, I did a top 10 list on Pain and Gain and some others, and Ocarina of Time is my number 6 of all time. This game was the first. <laughs> is, is Doom this... higher? Fucking it, it's my number 3. <laughs> Goddamn right it is. Okay. This is, without question, the best of the Zelda franchise. It was the first game to be showcased in a 3D environment. Oh, my God. And, of course, you know, you're playing once again as Link, who has to destroy his arch nemesis. God and Dolph. Mm-hmm. And the way to do that is by going around and, uh... Playing, uh, playing certain music notes on an ocarina. Uh huh. And this takes you on an unbelievable quest throughout all of the world of the setting that takes place in Zelda. And Hyrule. Mm, Hyrule. Thank you. Yes. Uh, this. I forgot how many hours this game is, but it's a long fucking game. Uh -huh. it's, it's at least worth... five, I want to say. Oh God. But there, uh, my only flaw with the game are the fucking owls. <laughs> I want to say flaw. This is a pain in the ass. Really? Is it was the area where the owls just keep? Oh yeah, you, you know you know what I'm talking about, right? Oh, of course. Oh, they're fucking annoying as shit. But yeah, this game it's, is it's perfect. 
Yes, it is. No, 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 it's not true. Legends are not, it's not the perfect game. Kirby's Island Adventure is a perfect game. It's, be yeah. it's much better than Legends of Zelda. But. And uh, also, guys, like Jeff Gersman, you know, before, you know, when you worked at GameStop, uh, GameStop, GameSpot, GameStop, GameSpot, yeah. uh, you know, when he worked at GameSpot before he got fired for doing his fucking job, assholes, yeah, pretty much. he wrote that Ocarina of Time is a game that can't be called anything other than flawless. Yeah. And IGN called it the new benchmark for interactive entertainment. Whoa. That could shape the action RPG genre for years to come, and it did. And get this, Rockstar Games Vice President of Creativity, Dan Hauser, one of the Hauser brothers. Boy. These guys who write, they're behind, you know, they wrote Red Dead Redemption, they're behind that game, and all the Grand Theft Auto games. Another guy, those two guys. Dan Hauser stated in 2012, anyone who makes a 3D game who says they're not borrowed? Who says they're not borrowing something from Mario or Zelda from the '64? Is lying. Yes, agreed, one hundred percent. And here's the thing: this game is heavily criticized, criticized, or universally acclaimed as the greatest, and it is because it brings so much to the table. It was a revolutionary in action RPG and the 3D environment. It's a textbook example of retro done right. It manages to combine some uh -oh. aspects from all of the Zelda games, including the second one, side-scroller garbage. Uh, well, at least, in, at least, well, the reason but I guess... But, but the thing is, it gives you the same Zelda feel, but in an entirely new way. Yes. Yeah, but at least it's done well, unlike in uh, Zelda 2, yeah. The Avengers of Link, where if you fucking die, you start all the way back to the beginning, you still keep your shit, but you have to make the trip all the way back. It's so dumb. <laughs> I want to see a remastered version of Ocarina of Time. Has they, it been done? They have done, like, I think they've done it twice. Once on the GameCube, GameCube. and I think they did it on the Virtual Console. Okay. Because I don't follow they Nintendo as much anymore. Oh. Okay, so much what they did to Star Fox, so... Yeah, um... You know... Does it live up to the hype? Yes, and then some yes. help. Game rankings, 98%. I think it's at number one, two, or three of uh, the best... Uh, Actually, let's... Hold on, hold on one second. Let me look this up real quick. Yeah, go to GameRankings.com. Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Let me look on this real quick okay, here. No, no, no. Game rankings is like the best thing to go to. Fuck Metacritic, because they suck. Alright, let's go. Uh, well, they do. They do. <laughs> uh, all right, let's see. Um, it, All time rankings. best. Uh, rankings gave it 98%. Metacritic gave it a 99 out of 100. All okay, I have I have the list. And guess what? I say it's going to be either 1, 2, or 3. It's number two of all time. <laughs> all time. Number okay. Number one is Super Mario Galaxy with an overall uh, average of ninety seven point six four, and Legend of Zelda: Ocarina of Time is ninety seven point five four, one tenth of percentage. All right. Now listen to this. Um, game trailers. I who I used to be huge fans of. Thanks here. Huge fans of game trailers back in the day. Gave this a ten, perfect 10 out of 10, and their biggest game of all time. Never give games a 10. Never. They have never given a game a 10. Never. Other than this game, I believe. So Impro gave it a 5 out of 5. IGN again gave it a 10 out of 10. Uh, let's see, Nintendo Power gave it 9.5 out of 10. Bullshit. <laughs> um, Nintendo Power, again, named it the greatest game of all time. Yeah, like I said, my top ten of all time is my number And it lives six. up. Goddamn right it does. It lives up to the hype. Does. Anyone who says otherwise... Yeah, like I said, there's a reason why Super Mario 64 and Legend of Zelda are my number one, number two... Oh, wait, my number two and my number one. Because they're the most... Rev uh, they revolutionized gaming forever. So there you have it. That's my number one, and that's Alexander the Great's number one. So, Mr. Garrison... Oh... Ass wipe. Fuck off. Were you sleeping during that? No. No, he was he was massaging the prostate. And you know, basically 
And oh yeah, by the way, maybe down the line we might be doing the top five PlayStation One games of all time. And by the way, Resident Evil Two is not going to be my number one. <laughs> is it going to be Crash? Or what, what was it? Crash they had? No, they were fighting over Crash Bandicoot War and Resident Evil Two. I'm not going to give it away, but you know what I say? You said what? What? The obvious, you don't have the obvious choice for number one. I'm not going to give it away. I'm just going to. Rest my case there until the next video. So, Mr. Garrison, Alexander the Great, last words. All right, well, folks, that's going to have to do it for this top top five listing. So, as for the next case that we're going to do, we're going to get out. We're going to continue going into the classics. But instead of with Nintendo, we're going to move into Sony. And we're going to talk about some PlayStation. So, that's going to have to do it for this particular video. So, please subscribe for more bullshit to come. And, as always, ciao. For now. Mr. Garrison, I want to thank you once again for yeah. allowing me to be a part of this review. You're most welcome. Why the hell are you flicking me off? Well, that's my way of giving a thumbs up. Oh, well, right back at you, buddy. Thank you. Uh, you don't know where that finger's been. Yeah, thank you for me. Thank you. Well. <laughs> thank you for allowing me to be on the network, and as always, uh, until the next video, peace out, baby. See you guys next time. And, uh, yeah. All right, well, that's the answer for this guy. And if you excuse me, I'm going to end it on a light note. I'm going to go beat off to some Julia and porn. <clears throat>